This is the only MMO where you save the world by doing someone else's laundry and playing flute five times in a row. This is the only MMO that has the worst combat but the best gathering and crafting sound designs. This is the only MMO that costs $40 and costs 30 more to get a mount. This is New World and I regret spending time with it once again. <laughs> Let's remind our new viewers that this is a follow-up to my previous video with first impressions where I tried New World for the first time to share my experience as a completely new player. I bought it with a huge discount and still wanted a full refund. Because it was a technical mess, it looked and played badly and the content overall was mediocre at best. I've spent far more time running the empty maps than doing something and when I did something I felt bad about it. Now let's start a fresh character on a fresh server and see what the game is all about in 2024. My hopes and prayers were that the Amazon team, the studio that has the access to almost all the money in the world and technical capabilities of the world, would at least make the game playable and looking a lot better than it was during the release. Long story short, yes, they did, and that's the only positive thing I have to say about it. We choose the server, watch a cutscene that will lose all relevance in the next hour and brace ourselves for impact from the character creator. New World's character creator is still hilarious, and its uniqueness lies in its inability to generate a realistic human face by default, not to mention a pleasantly looking one. While other character creators need to be pushed hard to create a complete monstrosity, New World's generator does this by default, and that's definitely a feature worth the price. We create something not atrocious, hide the face behind the beard and start playing. The first 10 minutes and the tutorial section feels deceptively exciting, as you land on a mysterious island, where everything cannot die and in due time becomes insane and loses all the humanity. And while you may be typing that this is a complete ripoff of Dark Souls' Lordran, let me stop you by telling that the story of New World becomes irrelevant pretty fast, because of its disconnection with the gameplay. Immediately Immediately after the dark and devilishly narrated exposition about some evil witch who possesses our body to release all the horrors on the humanity, we get a quest to touch grass. I understand that it's a traditional MMO BS with fetch quests and hunt a number of monsters quests, that's the genre, but what good MMOs like Guild Wars 2, Final Fantasy XIV and even WoW do to make them tolerable is the immersion of the fantasy world and creation of a feeling of escaping to somewhere where you can be a purple djinn from Aladdin or a cat girl. In New World you can only be homeless and abuse natural resources to not die. Everyone can do that in real life. Thank you. The combat is still not fun, the sound design is awful and the overall responsiveness regardless of the weapon you choose is floaty and clunky. <laughs> I appreciate the devs' attempt to make a classless system, where you can use any weapon and almost freely respect your build according to your choice, but it makes little sense if the combat-to-combat -combat encounter feels like a chore that you need to endure. On the other hand, the gathering mechanics are sounded almost perfectly, which is an absurdity in itself. Every swing of the axe is responsive and design of fallen trees makes you repeat the process a lot more than fighting enemies. Fishing minigame is a lot more engaging and even despite the water physics being almost absent here, catching another fish is a lot more fun and interesting. The same concerns crafting, which is quite deep and complex. The same concerns the inventory management and the reputation system. But overall it feels like New World prioritizes chopping trees and fishing a lot more than combat, or it simply was the case when all the resources of devs went to designing the harvesting and crafting and they run out of money when designing combat. Graphics is still meh at best. Indeed, it started working a lot better than it was during the release, and it's got one of the best lighting that I've seen that shows the open areas with forests and seashores like the most immersive and realistic they could 
could ever be. But the cities and the character models feel unrendered and look like low-quality knockoffs, even when cracked up all the graphic settings. My PC is well meeting the system requirements, and the game is installed on SSD, but the loading times is still longest in online games I've played so far, and when it's loaded, I see this. And overall technical aspect of the game feels like either an indie project that has run out of money or an old MMO dying from completely greedy and unsupportive developer. You are required to run everywhere by foot. And the mounts are purchasable with a DLC that costs like another copy of the game, which, let's remind once again, costs $40. For such kind of money you can buy a full release of Final Fantasy XIV with all the content and 30 days of playing. Or something like Helldivers 2, which people adore right now, but I'm too cheap to buy it, let's be honest. So if you are a new player considering whether you should buy it or not, let me tell you, it's not worth spending money. But if you already own it, you can play it as it started working a bit better than it was on the release, while still being buggy and technically flawed. So if you want to farm, craft and grind enemies with floaty combat and you already own the game, you can return to New World to kill time. Otherwise, just buy a Stardew Valley, which offers similar gaming experience but for a lot less. The PvP is here, and I assume that people play for PvP only, as the activities are only divided to six groups – traditional PvE instances and PvP arenas. But is the PvP worth $40? I'm not sure. As for the PvP, you can still play free private servers of Lineage 2 Interlude and be happy with PvP, and a lot more responsive combat despite its objective oddness and donate $40 for charity. It'll be a lot more beneficial for you and the others. And that's it for today. If you liked the video, please click a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. Share your thoughts and impressions down in the comments below and let me know what game should we review in the next video. As for now, I thank you all for watching. My name is Alex B and I'll see you in the next one.